you've probably noticed that electricity costs are on the way up to almost astronomical levels that we've never seen before. However, with challenge becomes opportunity and we think we've got a great opportunity to help you save energy and maintenance costs in the shape of these surface mount golf fittings from Robus. So, I had myself a little walk around town, Gary, and I was amazed how many of these fittings are used. These are the workhorse yeah. of the stairwell, the corridor, the area out the back with the bins. You know, there's enough light there to do the task. These are functional fittings that are everywhere. However, I was amazed how many of them still use no. 2D tubes. Haven't even moved over to LED. And that is what we're going to look at today. I've got a fantastic product that gives you loads of options and we think is a game changer. But as ever on eFix, we like to get close to the products. And you've been busy, Gary, in this area. Absolutely, yeah. Get given those golf fittings from Robus. And I think the first thing I thought, well, I'm going to relight the area where we keep our cables. There was no light in here. It was the area nobody wanted to venture into. So I've installed the conduit system behind me and three different versions of the fittings within the range. Yeah, and obviously... You could say we were saving energy in this area because it was incredibly dark and we <laughs> tripped up and couldn't find the cables we want. So I think we've done a great job. We've followed Ray Maloney's rule of three. We've put three to make a bit of a feature of them as well. But we've got some great features that we think you'll love in this range. And we're going to look at the standout one, which is this modular conversion kit. Now we're going to look at the first option in that and it's how you can convert between different energy settings and different colour temperatures. So this is our selectable gear tray. Let's just flip it over on the back first and have a look at the terminals. We've got obviously neutral, permanent live, our CPC connection is switched live and load out. We'll come on to the features of those as we go through and look at the different versions, but let's just look at the selectable one first. And the first thing you can select is the color temperature. So we've got 3000, 4000 or 6500 degrees Kelvin. Combined with the colour temperature, you can either have 10 or 15 watts, which obviously is higher or lower light output. I'd just like to say that I no longer measure my light output in the watt. Wow, you've moved on. I there have. is a step change. Now, obviously, we measure light output in lumens, not watts, because obviously that gives you a clue to its efficiency. And this range from Robus goes from just over 900 lumens all the way to just under 1300 lumens. And they also put it on the box if you can't remember. And the good thing I like about Robus is it's attention to detail because actually you expect the light output to be different at different colour temperatures. And that's what you see, slightly lower when it's a warm white, slightly more light when it's a cooler white one. And that's reflected in here. There's all the data for that on the website. I will put a link in the description where you can have a, a deep dive into that and pull down the files you might need if you're going to do a lighting design. But then when it comes to lighting design, Gary, what's the next thing that people often think about in this kind of application? Absolutely, it's the emergency light fitting, and can we have one of those? So let's see how easy it is to convert this fixture to an emergency version. Anybody who's possibly done this in the past, we used to see a spider's web of wires. This is really easy, literally plug and socket connections all round. So the first thing we're going to do is fit our control gear to the back plate, and that's easy because we've got these locating tabs here. So it's a case of just snapping them in, no screws required. It is just lock them into place with those tabs. Yeah, you're quite right. I've looked at those wiring diagrams before and it's a, a deep breath moment. It looks like we're just going to reroute a few wires now. Yeah, it is. So it's now a case of unplugging the wire that went from our terminal block to the conventional driver across to our emergency LED driver. We've got neutral live and a switched live connection there as well. So that plugs in there. And then the output from the emergency driver now plugs into the conventional driver. Now you'll notice on all the wires there, there's useful labels as well. Yeah, we do like a label and the whole thing is fully labeled as well. What sort of wattage am I gonna get out of the emergency element of this fitting? Uh, so this is a one watt output and there's some other benefits of that we'll come on to as well. So this is the output from our emergency driver. So now it's a case of just plugging that into the output of the conventional driver and that's where that's gonna power the LEDs on the circuit board at the front. And there's one of those lovely labels to tell you exactly where it goes. And there's your LED indicator and that's even labeled as well to where to poke that through the tray. Yeah, so that's yeah, the, the green light. And uh, I quite like these ones that, that it's not too bright. Sometimes people go really bright on these LED indicators. This isn't. The battery pack itself is lithium ion phosphate. So it's a newer battery technology, which means it's very compact and also more environmentally friendly compared to those older NICADs. And that just plugs into the terminal block at the end of the emergency driver here. 
And the good thing about that, it doesn't power up the LEDs until it's had its first power cycle, so it's not going to discharge the battery earlier in the construction process before you've got the power on. Yeah, so if you were to flip that over, we'd see that none of the LEDs are illuminated, which is great, isn't it? We're not draining that battery before actually the first time we've powered it up. There's our LED indicator. Let's check it works. Yeah, so then we've powered up. You can see the green indicator there. So then cut the power, and then we can see our light LEDs have come on at a lower power level, but they're all illuminated in emergency mode. We could clearly see there when we went into emergency mode, in other words, we lost the power that all the LEDs illuminated. And thinking back to my time on site and testing emergency light fittings, it was often just a small cluster of those LEDs that come on under that circumstance. Yeah, and that's another well thought out feature of this product. Because of that, you have the same light distribution as you would when the fixtures in normal mains operation. Clearly not the same amount of light, but you don't need the same amount of light. And that's great for when you're doing your emergency lighting design. However, Gary, what is the most efficient type of light? Okay, it's one that isn't on, which leads us nicely into the next thing, which is occupancy sensors. So we found another use for our Nipex Super Nips, just to remove these small nibs on the uh, metal core circuit board of the light fitting, so we can uh, introduce our microwave occupancy sensor. So microwave sensors need to see the outside world, but they do work behind the diffuser, which is great, because it means you don't damage the IP65 rating of the fixture itself. Okay, and here comes that sensor again. No screwdriver needed, it's just gonna clip into the tray, and of course the tray is fully labeled of where it's gotta go. Yeah, which is great. No screws, yeah, again, just this is this is simple, simple conversion stuff. It, it's just, yeah, it's almost a bit like Lego, really. Uh, so just let's flip it over and just see how that's uh, uh, poking through the circuit board now. Uh, we're going to come back to this. We've got the uh, piano switches there to adjust the various settings uh, for the, the unit itself. And you'll also see there's a little light level sensor as well to measure ambient light. So again, it could be disabled when there's uh, daylight coming into the building. And as we said before, fully labelled all of the leads and it's just a case now of rerouting the leads in order that we can make the connections a little plug and play. So you can just push this one into position. Yeah, so this is the output from the microwave sensor. So yes, clearly labelled and that plugs into the input of the conventional LED driver. You can't get them the wrong way around, they are handed connectors. There's only one way to do that. And then here's our uh, input from the circuit board terminals into the uh, actual uh, incoming wiring. And is that it completed? That's it, so we've done our conversion. Uh, so let's just flip it over again, look at some of the options we can set. So the detection area, we can increase or decrease the, uh, obviously how far the uh, microwave sensor is measuring in terms of room size. So we'll just uh, put that to minimum so we can do a little test. And then we're just gonna have it come on for five seconds almost so we can do a little walk test and then you can uh, enable or disable the daylight sensor as well so let's uh, let's power up and check how that works so we've, uh, come on at uh, full brightness and then now uh, we're just going to wait for five seconds for that to, to go off as if someone's left the area so if someone's left the area now when anyone enters the area I'll obviously come straight back on again I know what you're thinking. You've seen the emergency, you've seen the occupancy sensor. Can you bring both parties together in the one fitting? Let's have a look. Okay, so now let's add the emergency option to our fixture we've just converted to sensor operation. So again, we're just gonna bring back in our emergency uh, power supply. So again, just clips into place as we saw earlier. And then we just need to make some more changes to the wiring. So again, let's unplug the wires that come from the terminal block and then plug them back into the emergency driver. So you're going to go through the emergency driver first. So that's our uh, live and switch live. And now the output from that uh, driver now goes to the input of the uh, microwave sensor. So again, just uh, plug that back in. And that's our uh, mains end taken care of. So now again, let's just bring the Bring the battery pack back in, uh, plug in our output from the uh, emergency driver into the uh, output of the conventional LED driver, slot the batteries in and put the uh, connect that battery pack back up. And I think you've demonstrated what a simple and fast process it is as well. Obviously pop your LED in and then we're probably ready to energise, aren't we? Yeah, so let's just give it a little test. But let's just quickly revisit those terminals first. So we've got our uh, switch live and permanent live, and then we've got the L out, or the live out terminal. So that can be used to trigger 
other fixtures from this microwave sensor. So more than one light in the area, the first one gets triggered and they'll all come on and we'll see that now. Yeah, yeah so they're both on, so it's activity in the area. Yeah, so again, let's just wait for that to time out. So we'll see that the, uh, the both fixtures switch off at this point. So about five seconds we'd set it to, so we'll see them both go out. And when there's activity in the area, they both come back on. So if we lose the power now, we'll only see one of the fittings actually re-energize. So yeah. the power's gone off and it's just the emergency one now that's illuminated. Yeah. That was a simple, simple process. Wow, I mean, that is great how you can pack all of those options in to that one unit. And the connections are simple. And I, I stress it again, if you've ever had to look at how a normal conversion is done with that wiring loom and really, really complicated wiring diagrams, that is probably the easiest one I've ever seen. And I don't say that lightly. However, you may not want all of that technology. You might just want a simple energy retrofit. And again, Robus have got you covered there because in this golf range, you can get this gear tray, which replaces the 2D lamps is where we started the story. So this one comes out and this tray pretty much fits almost any fitting, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it fits a lot of things out there. And there's also a lot of, uh, you know, I think legacy, even LED ones that were done a few years ago from possibly people who were ahead of the curve, where again, you can use this to re-retrofit and obviously ones even from different manufacturers. However, you can also get individual parts within the golf range that have all of the features in there without having to do the conversion. So you may have a big project where you need lots of exactly the fittings are the same and you don't need that level of flexibility. And this range is immense. You've even got the option. So this emergency fitting here is selectable in color temperature. Also has another great feature. This is a slightly slimmer version, which may help in some possibly narrow corridors or where you don't want to be dropping down too far from the ceiling. And yeah, this, it's, the range is immense but incredibly easy, incredibly flexible. And of course you'd be thinking, they haven't mentioned it yet, and it's normally Gaz that mentioned it. It's IP65 and it's IK9 as well for fittings across the range. Yeah, and that's what you'd expect in this kind of applications where we see this. But again, we go back to where we start from. A great way to save energy. And you know, that's an opportunity for contractors in the current climate we're in. Yeah. So yeah, dive in, take a look at this range or possibly share some of the things you like about the possibly we missed or some of the features that you're experiencing on site that you'd like to see in the range. Has the one been missed out? I can't see there would be, but if there has been one missed out, drop some comments below. We'd love to know what you think about this range and obviously the challenges that you face in these kind of applications.